I'm sure somebody wants to know what Shatner's like. <laughs> <laughs> He's what you see. <laughs> uh, if you wanted to define a matinee idol, it would be Bill Shatner. <laughs> He's, he has a wonderful ego. There's nothing he can't do. He's physically brave and will dare to do anything. Uh, he's stubborn. Uh, he thinks the world of himself <laughs> as a cover-up because he's really, like every other actor, scared and shitless. <laughs> uh, I like Bill. Uh, he can wander off into a strange place from time to time. Leonard, on the other hand, I've never understood why Leonard became an actor. He is a pure intellect, pure intellect, very bright, very gifted, and there's something about his non-acting that makes him an authority figure and put the ears on and it all came together for him. As you know, he wrote a book uh, before I got involved with Star Trek called I Am Not Spock. <laughs> and the first thing I had to do in Star Trek II was to convince him to come back into the cast, which he said he would never do. And I did that. We had dinner one night while he was playing Vincent Van Gogh. We talk about a man obsessed with ears. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Leonard, you, you got, we can't do it without you. He said, no, 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 no. I said, listen, I'm going to give you the best death scene in motion pictures <laughs> since Psycho. <laughs> Which I remembered as the, as the most terrifying and shocking death scene I had ever seen because the the, the marquee star of the movie dies one-third of the movie in. He said, oh, that, that'd be interesting. You'd be a shock. I said, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, he said, all right, I'll, I'll, we'll do that. I had an associate I haven't mentioned. Associate. That's not a fair word. Gene Roddenberry, who created Star Trek. Yeah. All hail. Uh, I did not like Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> he did not like me. It goes way back to when I was in ABC and, and I just had to supervise a very bad Western that he piloted. And uh, I found him to be uh, egocentric and difficult to work with. That does not diminish his contribution, his genius. And that special ability that Gene had, which I would call promotional, prom uh, promotional genius. He knew how to take things and make them become instantaneously important. Gene set up, in this day of the internet, it seems archaic, and it was, but it was an internet. It was called the Network of Fanzines magazines on mimeograph paper. There were about 100,000 of them published and written by Trekkies. To those of you who care, trek <laughs> uh, tre The preferred term is trekker. <laughs> but in those days, they published these things. So Gene, who was one of eight people who knew this the, who had the outline and knew what the scene was going to be with Spock, uh, linked it to the fanzines. 100,000 fan magazines said they're going to kill Spock. <laughs> well, the mail got a little heavy there. <laughs> and uh, we had more, I mean, it was just insane. You can't kill Spock, you know, terrible. Death threats, the whole thing. <laughs> So I sat down with Leonard, I said, look, Leonard, you know, this is, we can't do this. He said, all right, all right, that son of a, well, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. Bless him, he stayed. And uh, we put the death scene at the end. 
and we did do one little trick that we played on everybody. Star Trek II begins with a simulation scene uh, in a simulator in which a disaster takes place and most of the crew dies and Kirk comes in to call an end to the simulation, walks out with Spock, looks at him and says, aren't you dead? <laughs> and the preview audience has told us that that was exactly the way to handle it. Everyone said, oh, God, we're not going to kill him now. <laughs> gotcha. 